suspicious when we're online, especially when we're asked to verify our identity, which is there for our own good? I think in terms of verifying your identity, usually um, depends on the company. But if you're being asked by a company to do the right things, if you're joining a bank or some other organisation like that, they'll put those protections in place because they want to look after you. But if you're being asked by another company, I think just, you know, make sure that the, the website looks genuine. Um, if someone makes a phone call to you and they're asking for lots of details, hang up the phone straight away. If it feels too good to be true... It generally is too good to be true. So I think, you know, we have to, we all think that we're digitally savvy. You know, I've had fraud. Uh, I've lost money through things. Uh, so, you know, we all have to be really careful and take that extra step. Fraud has increased by almost half since 2019 online. So we have to be really careful. You're in the business of confirming people's identities and making sure people are who they say they are. I was using a service about two weeks ago to, to rent an outfit for a party I was going to, and the company asked for my passport details. And I felt, gosh, this feels like I'm giving you a lot of information, and I was a bit distrustful of that. But that's the type of process that they... That, that's OK. Yeah, that's OK. And I think because... No, I imagine the dress that you were renting might have been a little bit valuable. And so they wanted to make sure that Rosie was Rosie and we could make sure we were renting that dress to Rosie and not somebody who wasn't Rosie. The, the, the question is, you worry as the person behind the computer, well, who am I actually giving these details to? Maybe this would be a fraudulent website. Yeah, and so I would say make sure that that site is you know, genuine. Now, there's always going to be a little lock at the top of the website to say that lock that website is genuine. If you're ever worried about it, shut that website down, go back onto your preferred, you know, your internet provider and Google again and make sure that's that's genuine. Yeah, we had to make changes to a bank account the other day and, and this is becoming more and more common. They get you to take a video of yourself saying something. Yes. Don't they? And that still feels quite odd. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to do that, but they're, what they're trying to do is what's called a liveness test. They're saying, you know, are you there today? Is this, an, is this a real person behind the camera? And that's the kind of thing to make sure that you are genuinely who you say you are. Yeah. One of the biggest problems is once we've been victims of fraud, according to this latest research, we don't actually trust the follow-up process. Yeah, there are two things that happen. So about 60% of people said they will not go to the police if fraud happens. And I think there's another thing that was in the survey that was quite interesting. They're saying most people, well, a third of people said, I don't think I'll get my money back. And another 30% said, I'll feel embarrassed. So you put those things together thinking, well, I won't get my money back and I'm a bit embarrassed and they don't, they won't go to the police. I would offer two pieces of advice always go to the police because if we don't report it, the police are never going to apply resources in that area and always call your bank because the bank can, you don't know what the bank can do. So call your bank and go to the police always.